every time you click what? that... What? Your, your mouse moves? Yeah, you move on its own, yeah. Play that at night, you'll be like, oh my god, did something possess my mouse? You just wanted to get your friends off the island, but you chose to stay and kill because guess what? You're enjoying this. You're a sicko. Hi, I'm Joshua Lim. You're watching The Library Report, a series that explores the illuminating stories and colourful characters found within and beyond our libraries. In this episode, we take a look at storytelling in the wide and varied world of video games, together with an avid gamer and a game designer. We're going to talk about gaming and you know there's so many kinds of games here. board games role-playing games video games of course and there are also many reasons why people play games but today we're going to focus on storytelling in video games and with us we have a librarian Shu Cheng as well as a game developer Drew with us please introduce yourselves Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shi Chong. I am a librarian from the National Library Board. I play games in my free time and I've been gaming since I was in primary school. My name is Drew. I am an indie game developer, which means I kind of just do my own thing and make games that hopefully people play. Why do you think people play video games? The very simple answer is video games are fun. I think games are a way for us to de-stress, a way for us to explore different things, a way for us to play through the storytelling. For a lot of people, they go into games wanting to explore maybe a different culture through the conduit of uh, gaming. And uh, games provide a very effective way to do that because you get to be the character within the game itself and experience these things firsthand. I think it's a matter of convenience. Honestly, you know, if you want to play soccer, you got to get a whole bunch of people together and find a field somewhere. <laughs> you know, back in the day, you know, back in my day anyway, you know, like playing video games involved, you need to get like a console, then you got to attach it to a TV, you got to spend about like 10 minutes fiddling with like the, you know, whatever. <laughs> or you needed a PC. You know, these days, everyone's, almost everyone's got a phone and you can game on your phone. There are, there are games now that you can, you know, uh, that will take you two or three minutes to complete a level, mm -hmm. you know, which means it is something you can do going up from the lobby to whichever floor, you know, your office is on. Mm -hmm. The Mass Effect Trilogy, I don't know if you've played it, that is like my go-to game. The consequences of your actions and what you choose to do results in maybe some characters dying and you have to live with that for the rest of the story. What you just said actually reminded me of this game that I started playing recently. So it's an indie game uh, called Undertale. So Undertale uh, follows a very typical sort of RPG structure where like you are the protagonist, you fall into some unknown place and then you kind of have to kill your way out of it. But Undertale offers this option of sparing the monsters. So when you look at the control buttons, you have attack and mercy. So mercy is the act of sparing the monsters. So I think this kind of actually makes sense within the context of the game because you fall into this random place and this random place is inhabited by monsters. So technically you're trespassing. <laughs> so if you go around killing people like a normal RPG to level up, technically you're performing like genocide on a species that has not done nothing to wrong you. Undertale actually rewards you for not killing the monsters. So if you don't kill them, you spare them. You actually get to make friends with them along the way, the enemies. And then the towns that you encounter will be more rich with life. You get to interact with more people. And the game actually kind of pushes you towards that path. So I think that's kind of similar to what you mentioned mm -hmm. about Mass Effect, I think. Okay. Yeah. There is an older game called uh, Star Control 2. At its base level, you know, Star Control 2 is you, you're going around like, you know, trying to protect the galaxy from a big invading sort of, you know, uh, species that's trying to either indoctrinate or kill everyone. Which, you know, when you, when you, when you phrase it that way, it sounds pretty much the same as Mass Effect. Yes, it is actually. <laughs> but that's fixed. But like, you know, back then, you, you know, you'd be able to like make kind of decisions that would have like, you know, far-reaching consequences. You know, uh, one of your allies is requesting for help. You know, if you don't go and help them, if you take your time running side quests, <laughs> after a while, their sphere of influence just, just drops to nothing, which mm -hmm. means that race has just been eliminated from the game entirely. As a, as a young gamer, I was like probably like, you know, like 14 at the time, you know. And you start learning, wow, you know, when I make choices, big things can happen. And the wonderful thing about Star Control 2, which I believe, you know, which I feel is there in Mass Effect as well, is this, this difference, uh, the different alien species, and they all have different cultures. And when you get to know them and interact with them, it's, it's you know, you get to, 
you know, the, the weird bird aliens, they're pretty cool, you know. Then these ones that look like, you know, giant mushroom things, and they're kind of nasty and, and, you know, aliens that seem to be helping you are actually not, you know, mm. particularly nice. And as a storytelling device, it kind of gets people to look beyond the surface. I guess that kind of goes into our next point. What is it about stories in games? What's different about them? Mm, okay, maybe we can talk about a type of uh, gaming genre that's very close to book reading, which is visual novels. So visual novels are basically, uh, think of a game with dialogue, and you have characters coming up uh, speaking to you, and the environment changes. So it's very much like flipping a book, except that you're pressing buttons. The appeal of it uh, versus books is that you kind of get a choice in what sort of ending you want based on your actions. And although these choices are, I would say, pre-programmed, because let's say like this game has three endings, so there are only three possible routes that you could go through and you will always get these three endings. So I guess for some people it would be like, uh, why even bother, you know? Because there are only three endings, what? Right? But I will argue that even though there is this sort of fake agency, you are still the one making the choices, you are also getting the consequences of those choices. And sometimes the act of even just clicking the next button can be terrifying. So for example, there's this game that I played a few years back. Uh, it's called Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, do not be fooled by the name of the game. Uh, it's not a cutesy game. It's actually a horror game, so uh, if you ever want to play the game, please read the warnings first. It's quite terrifying in the sense that you don't know what's going to come next. Is it going to be a jump scare or is the mouse going to move on its own? But every time you click what, that... What? Your, your mouse moves? Yeah, you'll on move its... on its own, yeah. Play that at night, you'll be like, oh my god, did something possess my mouse? Uh, what's happening? It yeah. is, it is a, a really creepy game. And, uh, okay. It's quite frightening. So, uh, the act of just pressing the button to go next, you don't know what's going to happen. And I think that in itself, having such a visceral reaction to the game, right, is so much different from reading a book. Because when you're reading a book, when you flip the page, right, you can sort of temper your own reaction towards it. But when you press the button for the game, the image will just jump out at you. You can't do anything about that. Yeah. So I think that's the difference between games and, I guess, reading a book. Mm, okay. When you're watching a horror movie, for example, yeah. okay, let's take like the, the Doki Doki horror and, and compare it with like, let's say, a, a horror movie. Okay, with a horror movie, like the, the blonde girl, you know, is being stalked by like, uh, some slasher, <laughs> uh, slasher creep, okay? And you're like, go, 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 get out the door, go out the door, you know? And, and, and it's freaking you out. You can close your eyes, <laughs> okay? And it's still gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You know, whether she goes out the door or she gets, you know, she gets killed, it's still going to happen. You can close your eyes and sort of disconnect yourself for a while. You can't do that in a game. You have to be the one pushing the joystick forward. You have to be the one making that conscious decision. You know, you are affecting it. And in return, it is affecting you. Mm -hmm. There are some things that only that interactivity of a game, you know, some, some, some stories that only that can really sell you the full effect. Let's take Far Cry 3, for example. Mm -hmm. Far Cry 3 is a first-person shooter, so, I mean, you know what that entails, right? You go around shooting and, and, you know, killing a whole bunch of people, you, you know, then you get bigger guns and you can kill more people. There is that gameplay loop, okay? The story of Far Cry 3 is that you're, like, uh, some thrill-seeking, holiday, vac you know, vacation-y sort of people, and you get, like, uh, kidnapped by, you know, some gang thing, you know, and you're on an island, and you have to escape from the island and try to get your, you get your buddies off the island. And in doing so, you, you become the guy with the gun going around, you know, shooting and killing bad guys and leveling up. Mm -hmm. In true video game form, okay, there is the main quest line in doing these missions, but as a gamer, you are likely to go and do all the side quests to make you more powerful and get you the, the bigger guns. You know, you're not going to power through the main quest line. Mm -hmm. And the game plays with it, this, this whole concept, okay? Because you're going to do all these side quests, it, and, and, you, and, you, and it's enjoyable. I mean, I gotta say, the, the game mechanics are really enjoyable. You know, you hop in a car, you go somewhere, shoot some bad guys, you know? And after a while, you kind of, it, it, the game forces you to confront this where hey, you just wanted to get your friends off the island. You could have done that ages ago, but you chose to stay and kill because guess what? You're enjoying this. You're a sicko. <laughs> but the game actually like, leads it, you to a certain point? Yeah, it, it gets to that, that wow. point. It makes you confront this uh, element of yourself uh -huh. that, you, and that you are, in a way, really enjoying this mass murder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this would not be able to come out in a regular movie or a book mm. because you had no 
no, no agency in that. You did not affect that to happen. You are virtually in the shoes of someone going around doing this, and you're making it happen. And in doing so, you have a much more profound, you know, slap in the face mm -hmm. later on when mm -hmm. the game, you know, flips, it, flips the script on you and say, hey, why are you not getting off the island now? As a game designer, do you want to give players as much control as they can have, or do you want to limit that? Your job as a designer is not to give them everything they want. Your job as a designer is to make a fun game. So, like when I was making my game, which is a visual novel, Gloom and Doom, totally available on Steam, <laughs> gonna be on consoles really soon, um, totally buy it. <laughs> okay, my game was definitely linear because I had a very, very specific story I wanted to tell. I wanted to, to talk about, you know, uh, mental health issues. I wanted to talk about this feeling of wanting something more out of life, you know, and wanting to control your own destiny. And I wanted to put in all these 90s, you know, slacker movie references because I'm a 90s kid and I think it's un underrepresented, you know? <laughs> That's what I want to do. So I'm going to go for a linear story there. I put in specific choices uh, in certain sequences where I get people to think about certain topics. Like say, there was a scene where the, the Antichrist is talking to this wraith, okay? And they ask the question, what is your definition of love? And the options are like, you know, uh, friendship, you know, self-love, et cetera, et cetera. I put that in, that doesn't, truth be told, doesn't really change the, the <laughs> gameplay in any way. But I wanted to put that choice in to get the player to reflect on their own values mm -hmm. and to think about this. What do they think mm -hmm. love means? If you want to deal with something that's serious, you can't have fun. Do you find yourself at some points conflicted between the two? Yeah, I got a lot of, I got a lot of reviews that say I, I tried to cram in too many jokes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's for sure. But no, no I mean, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chalk that up to my own shortcomings as a writer. But you can definitely deal with heavy issues with a with a with, with a lot of like you know uh, jokes and fun, mm -hmm. okay. Let's let's face it. Uh, most of the comedians, the the big you know comedians uh, in the world, are really depressed. That's where they draw their humor from, right? The the whole self reflection thing, and they really you know, and they're always in dark places, and they can draw this out, and, and they're kind of uh, you know, the way they deal with it is to you know is to use it to make other people laugh. You know, that's a way of, of, of finding purpose, maybe, you know, or, or, and just turning something really negative into a positive thing that you can give the world. Mm. Okay. To have a game sort of confront you and that you reconsider your worldview, uh, that's valuable. Because uh, isn't it great to hit two birds with one stone? You're having fun and you're also learning something about yourself. Of course, uh, these sorts of games are not always very, uh, I guess, fun because you really have to sort of like search within yourself and that can get quite stressful. So I can see why certain people might not really like it. But personally, I think it's valuable lah, and I do enjoy such games from time to time. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Shi Cheng and Andrew. Uh, I've leveled up a lot during this conversation and thank you so much for watching this episode of the library report do leave a like and a comment down below to share your thoughts with us if you liked what you saw please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>